and welcome to our very last episode of the CBU Show. I'm Poppy. And I'm Ella. We have a full schedule today packed with lots of fun topics. First, we have some information on summer opportunities and a little info about CBU graduation. Then, we have an interview with Student Act members talking about the Take Back the Night event that happened a couple days ago. We then have a sports update and some interviews on sports and COVID. Our last couple of topics are educational ones. We have another interview with our new CVSD superintendent, Renee Sanchez, interviewed by Chloe Galvin. We then have our last creamy review. School is almost over, and so is COVID, so you can all expect an eventful summer. There's a variety of sports opportunities offered this summer, including camps and game opportunities. CVU is offering a variety of different classes, workshops, and camps this year, and you can easily check them out on the summer flyer. This is a great opportunity to connect with others through academics and other fun activities, and you can sign up using the online forum linked on the flyer. Make sure to check your emails for more information about this summer from your sports coaches and principal. Seniors and families, graduation is approaching quickly. The ceremony will take place on Friday, June 11th at Champlain Valley Exposition in Essex. The ceremony begins at 3 p.m. and seniors should be there by 2. On Wednesday night at 7 p.m., please tune into, our, into CVU's convocation online. Information can be found on the main CVU website. Congratulations, seniors. We now have an interview with ACT members on Take Back the Night. So I am here with Chloe and Cammie, who are members of the Student Act Club here at CVU, which is a really important club that we should all be a part of. How are you guys doing today? Good. Pretty well, yeah. Good. So can you tell me a bit about what this club is and what you guys do in the club? So Student Act stands for Awareness, Change, and Training. Yes. And so it basically, Cammie's been in it longer. Than yeah, now, so it's, it's a club that's... The aim, the goal of the club is to aim to bring more awareness um, and change the culture on sexual assault and sexual violence. So what was the purpose of having a Take Back the Night event here at CVU? What did you hope to accomplish by having it here? So I first came across Take Back the Night and Take Back the Night Foundation kind of on a random Google search. And this was all happening during a lot of what was coming out of what, what's happening with UVM and the failures of Title IX at UVM. And then I thought, in addition to the campaign that is being rolled out by Social Justice Alliance, which we are both also in, around reporting against sexual harassment, bullying, assault, things like that, that it would be a, it was a very urgent time to do so. And I felt like, especially in the year where there hasn't been many community events, I thought it was important to have like a physical way to reinforce the notion that people aren't alone in the fight against sexual violence. Wow. Thank you so much for hosting it. It's an amazing event. I had lots of help. That's good. <laughs> so, how do you feel the night went? Do you feel you accomplished what you wanted to accomplish? Did it go better or worse than you thought it would? I feel like it went better than I expected. I feel like the turnout was really good. We had an open mic session that was only supposed to go on for about 30 yeah. minutes, but it went on for like a little over an hour. It was really um, encouraging to see all these different uh, women or people who identify um, as women to come forward with experiences that are so normalized nowadays. I, yeah, I think it went really well. I was surprised. I think at one point I counted like 120 people there, which was awesome. Um, yeah, I was happy. One thing is, I was a little disappointed that more guys didn't show up, but I also wasn't surprised because it often is marketed as it's solely for women and women identifying, but I would also like to say that Take Back the Night is for all people who have influence, who have been influenced by sexual violence, no matter their gender. Thank you guys so much for doing this interview with me today. And you're really important in this community, and I'm really grateful you guys are here to help. Well, I'm so glad you came. It was yeah, awesome so. hearing you speak. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much, guys, for hosting that event. Now we have Chandler with sports. The regular season has come to an end, which means we can now see the records for each team, starting with the varsity boys lacrosse team. They had an almost perfect season, having a record of 14-1. Also, they played their first playoff game against Rutland, which they won, advancing them to the semis. The boys' varsity baseball team had another great season with a record of 13-3. Their first playoff game came against South Burlington with an impressive performance, securing the win with a score of 16-6. The boys' varsity tennis team had a solid year of winning their last four games in a row, defeating Rutland and sporting a nice 9-3 record for the season. 
The boys' varsity ultimate frisbee team ended their season with a 9-4 record, playing the first playoff game against Leland and Gray and defeating them with a score of 15-4. The girls' varsity lacrosse team, after a hard-fought close game against St. Albans, which sadly ended 14-15, ending their season with a 10-5 record. The girls' varsity softball team had a 4-13 record on their season, with their latest game being against St. Johnsbury, which they eventually lost. The girls' varsity tennis team had a good year, having a record of 7-4. They played Burlington in the quarterfinals, which they lost. Now we have a highlight of the CVU girls' tennis team, made by journalist Aaron Fina. The CVU 2021 girls' varsity tennis team. With COVID-19 taking over their 2020 season, the CVU girls' tennis team made an epic 2021 comeback. They were lucky enough to step back on the court with an addition of 11 new players, seven of whom are freshmen and their five key returners. With such a young squad and already significant growth thus far, the future is bright for CVU Tennis as they look to win their sixth straight state championship title. Even through the challenges of what COVID-19 has put on the community over the past 14 months, the team has managed to have incredible success, going seven and four in the regular season. Early in the season, they were also lucky enough to know, with an already socially distanced sport, they were able to play mass-free starting after their second match. Furthermore, the team has been known for its world-class snack table, and even through the challenges of COVID, have been able to put that on. Additionally, the coaches, Amy DeGroote and Heidi Willoughby, emphasized the importance of a strong team spirit as an incredibly important part of a sport. DeGroote explained the team motto early in the season as building the team with the strongest competitors and the best team spirit in the state of Vermont. The girls have done just that, creating a supportive and fun environment while still growing and competing in the game they love. Thanks to our incredible seniors, Ella, Emma, and Sunny. The girls' varsity ultimate frisbee team finished their season with a 6-6 six six record, pulling it back with four wins in a row. Beating South Burlington in the tournament in the quarterfinals, then getting knocked out by Montpelier in the semis. Now back to the studio. We now have an interview with Renee Sanchez, who is the new CBU superintendent. Take it away, Chloe. Hi, everyone. I'm Chloe Galvin. I'm a student here at CBU, and I am here to introduce our new superintendent. So I am here with Renee Sanchez, who is our new Champlain Valley student intendant. Um, how are you doing today, Renee? I'm doing very well, Chloe. Thank you for asking. So I have a couple of questions that I'm going to ask you today. Nothing too serious, just to get a view of how you are going to operate now that you're our new superintendent. Great. Thank you. So my first question is, what made you want to come to Vermont and work here? So, uh, well, first of all, my wife is originally from Vermont um, and she still has family in the area and she has good, good childhood friends uh, from when she was growing up in Brattleboro who live uh, in, the, in the Chittenden County area. So we are excited to move back there. Uh, for us, it's also an opportunity for us to be closer to her dad. Uh, he lives just across the border um, of New Hampshire. And so we'll be able to see him on a regular basis. Um, the stories that my wife has told about her growing up and and having access to the mountains and having access to skiing and the water it's all something that i really want our children to have access to and in the uh, research that i did for this particular position learning more and more about uh, education in Vermont. It's something that I'm really excited for um, our three children to uh, have an opportunity to participate in. So my next question is about your last job and how this job will be different. So your last job was working at a school community with nearly 16,000 students in Indiana. How will leading a smaller school district with nearly 4,000 students change how you approach your job? That's a great question. So currently in my position in South Bend, I'm the assistant superintendent for operations. So I oversee human resources. I oversee transportation. Um, and I also oversee the, the COVID communications response for um, our district. Um, so I'm really excited to get back 
to working with all aspects, including budget and including curriculum, um, and actually getting to be in and around the kids more. Right now, my particular position deals with um, a lot of interfacing with adults, uh, but uh, my heart has always been that of a school principal. I was a high, I was a high school or secondary principal for 12 years. Um, and so uh, the last time I was up in um, the CVU area, I got to spend a little bit of time with a uh, principal bunting and um, touring the campus and uh, seeing the room that you're probably currently in right now. So um, it really does my heart good to be able to uh, know that I'll be able to tour campuses, uh, you know, have, uh, and yes, I will actually go eat school lunch um, on a regular basis. And and because one of the things that I do miss from being a, um, a principal is being able to be around the students. And one of my favorite things to do was lunch duty. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to spend some time with not only students, but also with faculty and with administrators on, on, the, on the respective campuses while being able to take turns uh, doing lunch duty. My next question is, what are your plans for change in our community? What do you plan on doing first? One of the, the things about a highly successful school district like um, like CVSD is that I'm going to have to get essentially on the ground and see where we are with the items that can be done um, you know, with that, uh, the community is already really behind and something that we need to be able to change. Um, but then also we have to understand that there, there are some other issues that the school board has already decided to take on things like equity, things like being able to make sure that we are the schools that our, that our students deserve. And so I want to make sure that I'm getting the feedback, not only from, um, the administrators, but the teachers, the students um, and those in the community, because um, yes, while we we um, have four thousand people who uh, who attend our schools, um, we also have a lot of people who are in the community and a lot of people who vacation in our community. So, if there is any kind of additional needs that we're going to have to do, potentially we might have to. Um, you know, schedule time with the people out in the community and make sure that they're on our side for those changes. I'm very excited to hear and see all the amazing things you do for our community. Well, I'm really excited. I'm planning on, um, I'll be, I'm planning on attending um, both the uh, CVU Pride Parade and the graduation this coming weekend if my schedule, uh, looking for a new home for my family <laughs> and myself uh, uh, allows. So I look forward to seeing and, and meeting as many people as I possibly can. Good, thank you so much for talking to me. It was a great meeting you and I hope to see you soon. Yes, Chloe, definitely. Thank you, everybody. He seems like he will benefit our community greatly, and I'm glad to have almost met him. As we end our very last episode of the CVU show this year done by Cohort 1, we have our last Creamy review. This week we headed back to Cookie Love to look at some of the other stuff they offer on their menu. I got something called a Love Witch at Cookie Love where they take uh, whatever creamy flavor you want and sandwich it between two of their cookies and then you just eat it like an ice cream sandwich. It was super good and I definitely recommend you give it a try. Looks delicious. Thank you all for watching and see you next year.